Good morning, Jubilee. It's wonderful to worship with you today. Today on the road to readiness, we will consider Mary's readiness to receive God's tremendous surprise, the visit from the angel and the coming of the Christ. Welcome to those of you who are watching us um, live on Zoom today. Good morning. And to those of you who are listening to the recording later, um, thank you for being part of this worship service. Please pray with me. Come, God is calling. Amid pressures and uncertainties, God's spirit envelops us in a surprising story. It is a story of accepting without knowing, of believing without answers. May we, like Mary, abandon our expectations and answer God's call with joy. Amen. As Duane lights the Advent candles, hear this call to worship Jubilee. Come, Lord Jesus, break into our world, break into our hearts, set us free. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. Our opening song today is a new version of the traditional Advent hymn, Come Thou Long Expected Jesus. Notice that it includes both the anticipation of Jesus coming and anticipation for Christ's return. This is Meredith Andrews singing, Come Thou Long Expected Jesus.
Jubilee, you can share your prayer requests with your church family by texting them to Dwayne right now. Or um, if you text them to us later today, we'll include them in tomorrow's newsletter. Our order of worship today will include uh, an offering prayer and then the worship song, Christmas Alleluia. Uh, I'll lead a pastoral prayer and then Amy Yoder has uh, submitted a story for the kids. And Maria Diener will read uh, the scripture for today. Dwayne's going to preach the sermon for On the Road to Readiness, an Advent sermon, and then um, we'll enjoy one of his favorite Christmas songs, Mary, Did You Know? There'll be an opportunity for you all to respond to the service, and we'll have some announcements. And then after the benediction, uh, there'll be a chance for you to reconnect. Instead of a closing song after the benediction, you Zoomers can uh, unmute your microphones and turn on your cameras. And for about 15 minutes following the service, you'll have the chance to uh, enjoy reconnecting with others from Jubilee. Since um, this will take place after the service, you can also, if that doesn't sound like fun to you, you can also just shut off and leave the meeting. Let's pray together. Oh God, you know that this morning The offering jar is empty, but we know that you are the God of enough. And our hearts are not empty. Please provide for what Jubilee needs. Please provide for what each person Jubilee needs. And we accept and receive your generosity with our deep thanks and gratitude. In the name of Jesus, amen. So as the songs play and you're listening, Along, Jubilee, are you singing too? We don't want you to forget how to sing. So join in singing these songs. Um, this song, Christmas Alleluia, is a great song for sing-along. And um, this particular rendition is performed by Kaylee Roberts and the Killyard House Special School Choir. This is Christmas Alleluia.
The shepherds left their flocks by night to see this baby wrapped in light. A host of fame just led them all to you. It was just as the angel said, you'll find a man who made your bed. You may well and save your Jubilee, we uh, know that you are praying for your church family uh, during these days. Here are some um, prayer requests that were texted to Dwayne and I this week. Regina Martinez is very concerned about a family that is in trouble after a serious work accident. So let's pray for this family. Bonnie Opal says, please pray for Mr. Bryant, who continues to recover from a serious accident. He is a custodian at Parkview Elementary, and his children are our students. Bonnie continues, I know his family would appreciate our prayers for his healing. Melissa Johnson is in the hospital in Jackson where she's being treated for internal bleeding and strokes. Um, Jubilee, do you remember Melissa? She's a friend of Miss Sandra's and Miss Sandra would bring her to worship and to potlucks. And we ask that you will please pray for our sweet Melissa. We're, we're celebrating the marriage of Zach, Shelley, and Maria Pierce, so grateful that they were able to be married yesterday, and we pray for them as they begin um, this new um, life together. Again, if you have other prayer requests, please uh, send them, text them to Dwayne or Kelsey or I, or email them, and we'll include them in the newsletter tomorrow, and Jubilee will pray. Oh God, we offer up to you all of those who are suffering, those who are ill with COVID and many other things, those who've been in terrible accidents, those who are grieving. 
We ask, oh God, that you would embrace this hurting world and bring us your peace and comfort and well-being. We ask for this in the powerful name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. During Advent, we've um, enjoyed a special Advent prayer focus, and ours today is adapted from Words for Worship 2. We are waiting, O oh God. We know you work wonders. You announce mysteries. You, O oh God, choose the surprising. You startle the un unsuspecting. You keep hope, joy, and peace alive. You fulfill your promises. Like Mary, may we practice believing while we are waiting. Amen. Well, kids, I hope you'll gather around because here comes the children's story time. Uh, first of all, we'll uh, listen and enjoy the uh, Jesus Loves Me song, and you can sing and dance along. And then thank you to Amy Yoder for her uh, sharing this children's story. Good morning, everyone. Well, actually, it's evening right now for me, but it's probably morning when you're watching this. Um, I, you know, I just really enjoy when it's cold enough outside that we can light a fire in our fireplace. It um, gives so much warmth. I love the way it feels. And the flames also make, um, give a beautiful light for this room. It makes it feel cozy in here. And yeah, I think I could just enjoy sitting here and watching the fire all night long. But do you think the fire will still be here in the morning? Probably not. Unless um, either Stephen or I stay up all night long putting wood on the fire, this fire is going to burn out. And then we'll have to try to light it again and start it in the morning. You know, there are other lights around this time of year have you seen some of the Christmas lights um, if you're driving around at night? Or actually maybe they're even at your house. Maybe you have some Christmas lights at your house. They are so beautiful. They add so much cheer um, and happiness to this season. And yeah, they're just a lot of fun. Um, you know, some people leave the Christmas lights on during the day too. Have you ever seen them during the day? But during the day, they're not nearly as bright as at night, right? Because during the day, it's bright outside, so we can't see the lights nearly as well. So um, they look best at night. Well, this year, I thought it would be fun to add some lights to our house. And so I got some lights out that we had in storage, and I actually have them here. And so I got them out. We've had them for a long time, and we didn't use them last year, but 
um, I thought it would be fun to use them this year. So I plugged them in to see how um, they looked and guess what? They did not work. They, not a single one of the lights um, was shining on this strand of lights. And um, you know, Christmas lights are beautiful for a while, but um, eventually they'll burn out and we either have to try to fix them or um, buy some new ones. Well, I want to talk to you about another light that you probably know about already, um, but this light does not ever burn out and it shines during the day and the night. Um, do you have an idea of what I'm talking about? The light that I'm talking about is Jesus. So his light shines all the time and it's not just, it shines brightly all the time. It's not just bright at night and it does not burn out. Um, however, it might look a little bit different than the lights that I was just talking about. Um, the way that we see the light from Jesus might be um, the way that he loves us or the joy that we feel. Um, that can be the light that he's shining on our lives. Um, also, it could be the way that someone shows kindness to us. Um, we might say that they're showing the light of Jesus to us. Um, and we can show the light of Jesus to other people, too, by showing kindness to them. And um, what's so special about it is that it's with us. His light is with us all the time, day and night, and it never burns out. So as you're enjoying the Christmas lights this season, um, I want you to remember that you have an even greater light with you because of Jesus. Thanks so much, Amy, for that lovely story. And kids, I hope you'll be watching the Christmas lights this season and thinking about the great light of Jesus. Thanks to Maria Diener, who will be reading our scripture for today. If you would like to follow along, it's Luke chapter 1, 26 to 45. Um, and following the reading, Duane will share a message from this text ready. Good morning, Jubilee. I will be reading our scripture this morning, which comes from Luke chapter 1, verses 26 through 45. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be? Mary asked. The angel, since I am a virgin, the angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come on you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age, and she who is said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month, for no word from God will ever fail. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. At that time, Mary got ready and hurried to a town in the hill country of Judea, where she entered Zechariah's home and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth, Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. In a loud voice, she exclaimed, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child you will bear. But why am I so favored that the mother of my Lord should come to me? 
As soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. Blessed is she who has believed that the Lord would fulfill his promises to her. Thank you, Maria, for reading those verses. Uh, some good words for us today. Uh, let, let me open with a prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you for your word. And we want to thank you for the Christmas, Christmas story. And we want to thank you for the way you work through these two ladies in this story. Um, I just pray that as we look at this story today, that it'll touch our own personal lives. Amen. Well, as I've meditated on these verses this past week, it was clear to me that Mary was ready. Mary was ready for one of God's surprises. I hope Mary's being ready will challenge us to be ready for God's surprise in each of our lives. Mary was engaged to be married. She was engaged to Joseph. And she was just a young girl. We don't see a lot of attention given to Joseph right here, but I'm sure glad Joseph stuck with God's plan also. Would have been very easy for Joseph to just walk away. This angel coming to Mary would have shocked me if that happened to myself. An angel coming up and starting to talk. The angel said, greetings, you are highly favored. The Lord is with you. I think I may have had a heart attack right there. I don't understand why the angel didn't say, first of all, don't be afraid, Mary, because I think I would have had to hurt heard that first. I think the angel should have started out with those words. Don't be afraid. Well, okay. Um, the angel goes on to say, yes, by the way, you're expecting a, a little boy, and this is going to be a special boy, the Son of God. What in the world was going through Mary's mind at this point? And I so like Mary's response. I am the Lord's servant. May it be to me as you have said. Well, Mary was ready. Mary was ready for God's surprise. as I meditated on these verses this week, made me think, are we ready for God's surprise in our lives? When God is working in us here at Jubilee, there will be surprises. And I hope each of one of you pay attention to what Mary's words were and make those words our own words. We are the Lord's servant. May it be as you said. Well, at this point, I need to say, God bless you, Mary. There was so much happening so, so quick, and so much was going through her mind at this point. And the angel happened to mention that her elderly aunt was having a baby. Why, why not quick go and talk to her? Verse 39, at that time, Mary got ready and hurried. Then she entered Zachariah's home and greeted Elizabeth. 
When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, her baby, the baby leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. This picture that Joel's projecting was one I came across a couple weeks ago. When I saw that picture, I, I felt the emotions that they were feeling. Well, I felt some emotions. I didn't feel exactly what they were. They were definitely having a God moment in this picture. God was blessing these two women with surprises. They needed each other right now. I have a feeling they were both ready for this surprise. But God still surprised them even though they were ready. When I think of the emotions in this picture, I thought about how quiet the house was the last several days before Mary got there. Elizabeth was ready to talk to somebody. Mary was ready to just unload. She was the perfect one to unload with. A actually, in this picture, they both needed to unload. You can read some more of this story this week from Luke 1, verses 5 through 25, and see why the house was so quiet. Zechariah, Elizabeth's husband, had some time to think. Why was Zechariah not ready? But verse 28 says, he was a righteous and blameless person. Something for you to think about this week. Think about what was happening for him through this story. As we look at this picture, I can hear Elizabeth saying, Blessed is she who has believed that what the Lord has said to her will be accomplished. I would like to lay my hands over you here at Jubilee and give you that blessing today. But I could give that blessing out over Zoom. Blessed are each of you out there on Zoom today. May each of you be blessed as you believe in what the Lord's will it will accomplish in each of your lives. We see so many surprises in the Bible. Crossing the Red Sea. You mean, you mean, you want me to walk down in there with the water on each side? The boy David taking down Goliath. You're going to send that little boy up there? He's great big. So many surprises. Jesus turning the water into wine. But that's just water. Jesus feeding the 5,000. He did what out there in the country with with what? Just that little lunch? More surprises. Jesus was not staying in the grave. He surprised a lot of people that day. Are we ready for the surprises God has coming for us? Or am I going to be a Zechariah and have to be quieted up for a while? 
we need to be ready to receive that surprise. We need to be ready for God to do something more than what we can even think or imagine. We need to be ready to be a part of what seems impossible. Are you ready? Are you ready for that surprise? I love Christmas songs. So many of them I could just call my favorite. But I think Mary Did You Know is my favorite of all my favorite songs. How could a Mary imagine this? Mary was ready for a surprise. Are we? Thank you. 
God's call is a wonder and a mystery. We are confused and still God calls us. In our deepest desires, we hear God's call. And amid our crushing weakness, God calls us. Jubilee, may our hearts fill with joy as we expect God's surprises and the Holy Spirit's mysteries. May we also respond to God's call with, I am the Lord's servant. May it be to me as you have said. At Jubilee, we have a long tradition of sharing responses to the service. It's actually an Anabaptist tradition reminding us of the importance of interpreting God's word together. So uh, let us know how God spoke to you through the word this morning. Thank you, Millie, for sharing your reflections from last Sunday. And Jubilee, if you have responses to today's service, you're welcome to email or text those to us. And if you're willing, they will appear in the newsletter tomorrow as a way to encourage our whole church body. Joel um, is doing his usual stellar job with the AV this morning. Thank you, Joel. And he's projecting the announcements for Jubilee for this week. Um, just want to highlight that on Wednesday night, there'll be a youth Zoom meeting. That's Wednesday night, a youth Zoom meeting, and there'll be more details about that coming. Join us next Sunday on Zoom uh, at 1045 for the fourth Sunday of Advent. Jeff Landis will preach on the road to Revelation, and our theme will be Reveal. So join us next Sunday. I want to encourage you to watch your um, email tomorrow for the Advent at Home Guide. If you're just starting that this week, well, start it this week. Uh, if you'd like, you can also pick up hard copies here at the back of the sanctuary on the offering table. Uh, I've found um, this to be a meaningful guide for my Advent devotions this year. And uh, we're also excited about this Christmas video that we're working on. Thank you to all of you who've already sent your videos. Thank you to all of you who have promise to do this. The deadline to getting your material to Kelsey is Tuesday. So please, um, if, you're, if you're working on a song or a skit, if you want to say Merry Christmas, Jubilee, uh, please mail, email all of those submissions to Kelsey by Tuesday. And we hope to have this to you on Christmas Eve. Looking forward to that uh, special treat. And today, uh, remember, if you are um, on Zoom, uh, you can leave the meeting after the service, but you can also hang around and chat um, with your friends, and uh, you can turn on your video. And if you'd like to, you can even turn on the audio and chat in that way. So we're going to try that this Sunday, and uh, we're open to hearing your feedback on this attempt to keep us connected. Uh, so if you like, hang around for 15 minutes after uh, the end of the service. Jubilee, hear our benediction. People of God, people on the road, be ready. God is speaking. The Holy Spirit is creating. Jesus is coming. Prepare to be surprised. Amen. God bless you, Jubilee.